My name's Steve, Stephen Meikle, and I'm here to provide you with some information about the test and how you can do well in the test if you follow this information that we discuss in the following slide. So maybe the first thing you need to consider is how you're going to be marked. Now in the test, of course, there are the four different parts to the test. But let's start with thinking about academic reading and listening. So in terms of those parts of the test, you are given a band score, and that depends on the marks that you get out of 40. So you see the marks coming up here down the side from 5 to 8. Of course, it goes from 1 or 0 even to 9. Um, so half band scores, by the way, are in between those marks. Again, with the raw score mark, it's... Um, it's a mark that's determined not just with one mark. So for example, the band score 5 there may be 14, 15, or 16, and then 5.5 might be 18, 19, 20, 21. Again, this is a raw score. So what happens by raw score, what we mean is that in the real test, if the test in one geographic location, because the test is conducted in different locations, if the scores were all very good, then and everyone was getting a high mark in reading, so it shows that it's quite an easy test, then those marks might change and go up slightly. So a 15 for the base score for a band score 5 may go up to 16 or 17, and vice versa. If it was a difficult test, it might go down. Now those scores are the same for academic reading and listening, the way that scoring system works. Uh, if you were doing general training reading, it's slightly different though. But for academic reading and academic listening, it's the same. So, also, of course, you get a mark for writing. Now, as you're writing, the marks come up here. You see that you're getting two marks for writing. You get a mark for task one and a mark for task two. So the task two mark is more important. You have more time to do task two as well. Now, how both of these tasks are marked is on these four criteria. So again, you're getting a mark from zero to nine, but you get a mark for all four of those things. So you'll get a mark for task achievement in task one, then coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, which means vocab, and grammar, range and accuracy. So you get a mark for each of them, and then they average that for task one, and they do the same thing for task two. In terms of the speaking test, what will happen is that you get a mark for four criteria again as well. And again, it's from zero to nine in terms of the band score. So your four marks are for pronunciation, fluency and coherence, a lexical resource, again, that's vocab, and grammatical range and accuracy. So after that, they determine your overall IELTS score, and that is simply an average of all of the marks put together. So that's just a very brief thing about how you're going to be marked when you do the IELTS test.